What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Friday edition of the Fantasy Q&A Show. It's me, your man, MG Marcus Grant, joined by Michael F. Florio and the specialist. Give yourselves a round of applause. Yay! We got Randy, we got Parker, we got Sam, we got everybody. Cynthia, Madison, the whole crew is a cast of dozens. It helps us put on all these shows here that you can get in your podcast feed if you subscribe, which we hope you do. We appreciate you being here. But, Florio, we have started week six officially. I know we'll talk about the Thursday night game uh, in depth in just a moment. But man, these last two Thursdays have been a slog. Yeah, I, I have to do like a tip of the cap videos to, at, at Fridays of players who play well on Thursday. And man, they've been making it really hard to pick three people to do videos on for it, these. It has been really, really rough to try and pick some top players from the Thursday <laughs> night games the last couple of weeks. Let me see. We, we've had, what, uh, last week we had 21 points scored. This week we had 19. So we've had... 40 points scored combined from four teams in the last two weeks on Thursday that's, night. That's going to be the first half of Bill's Chiefs this week. Not great, Bob. <laughs> Not great. Anyway, this is a show dedicated to answering your questions. You can always send them to us on the Twitter machine at NFL Fantasy. We will answer as many as we can during this show. The rest of them we leave to Aaron because he doesn't eat vegetables. Aaron, just learn to eat your peas and you can get out of answering some questions. That's the deal we made. I feel like it's a simple one. Anyway, you've got Q's. We've got A's. LFG, let's start, though, with that Thursday night game. It was the Commanders eking out a win over the Chicago Bears. Carson Wentz, he's 7-0 on Thursday night football. Didn't give you anything in fantasy, though. 4.16 fantasy points. Brian Robinson, congratulations to that young man on scoring his first NFL touchdown after an, an awful tragedy at the start of the season. He gave you 12 fantasy points. Terry McLaurin, just over eight fantasy points there. Justin Fields, who I had to start in the league. I know a lot of people had to start last night. He got you 18, almost 18 and a half fantasy points. Not bad there. David Montgomery with nine. Darnell Mooney with almost 14 fantasy points. And off the top of my head, I would think, is that maybe the best game of the year for Darnell Mooney? It very well could be. It very well could I, be, I'll right? Check. Like I, yeah, I don't have that off the top of my head, but it feels like that very well could be the best game of the year for Darnell Mooney. It was not it a game. It is. See, there it is. That, that tells you how the season has gone <laughs> for him. It was not a great game offensively, but we did manage to squeeze out a couple of guys we wanted to chat about. And for you, it was the quarterback of the Chicago Bears. Who also had his best fantasy game of the year, scoring 18.4 fantasy points. And I, I know Justin Fields hasn't been what we wanted him to be uh, coming into this season. But I think it's worth pointing out the last two weeks have been his best games of the year. Uh, he's been at 17 and then the 18 and a half points last night. Uh, he's rushed for over 47 yards in four straight games. So that is very encouraging. Uh, but I, I see a lot of people bashing Justin Fields. And yes, I, I admit he hasn't played great, but like at some point we also got to realize he's in a pretty bad situation here. Like the Bears last year lost Allen Robinson, did nothing with that money to replace him. Didn't dra They drafted a 25-year-old rookie who's having fumbling problems and a couple of day three O-linemen. Like, he's under pressure the whole time. And for a second straight year, they're trying to force him to be a pocket passer. His numbers, when he's on the move, are way better than when he's in the pocket. So, like, maybe just let Justin Fields do what he's good at. And we saw a little bit of that last night. I saw it in the preseason, too, where they rolled him out, got him out of the pocket, let him hit guys when he was on the move, and he looked a lot better. And I, I feel bad. Like, people are criticizing Justin Fields, but we sort of said this about him coming into the season that they did nothing mm -hmm. to help him out you talk about the old lineman you talk about the fact they did nothing with their pass catcher group and so we sort of thought this would be the outcome and so far it has been but he did take advantage of a positive and matchup last night by the way we went 40 drives without a touchdown on thursday night football Ooh, 44 zero that's, without a touchdown. That is tough. That is tough. We, we could have had one last night if Justin Fields' receivers knew how to, you know, use their hands. Curtis Samuel was literally fighting the football <laughs> at some point, too, like on the other side for Washington. <laughs> Brian Robinson, though, did have his best game of his young career. Admittedly, it's only been two games so far for him. But 17 carries, 60 yards, and a touchdown for Washington. But... What we saw last night is sort of indicative of what I think this backfield is going to be for the rest of the season. Yes, it was Robinson who got the majority of the snaps, but Antonio Gibson got in, had a couple of nice drives for Washington. J.D. McKissick is still on the field. He's still going to be the pass-catching back of record. So it was nice to see Brian Robinson get 60 rushing yards, but this is still a very inefficient rushing offense. And 
if it wasn't for the touchdown, it would have been not much to speak of for him. So hopefully this is a guy who's still sort of working his way back into shape after we mentioned you know, him being unfortunately shot before the season began. So it was nice to see him work in. But on the whole, I don't know that you can trust him as more than a flex option most weeks. No, I agree with you. I think because J.D. McKissick still has that two minute drill. Uh, he's still going to be the back that gets a lot of snaps when they're trailing and getting a lot of the targets there. And. If you have Antonio Gibson, right, outside of hoping for an injury or that he gets traded, there's, is there any reason to roster him? There really isn't. I, I've been saying you can probably drop him in yeah. most leagues. Certainly, you know, the 18 leagues, he probably didn't get drafted. 10 team leagues, if you got him, you can probably move on from him. Look, if you're in a 14 teamer, you're probably hanging on. But, you know, even 12 team leagues, it's sort of dicey whether you're keeping Antonio Gibson right now. So, all right, that's enough Commanders and Bears talk. We're done with that. <laughs> Let's get to some of your questions here. Of course, you can always hit us up, as I mentioned, at NFL Fantasy on Twitter, but let's get to some of them here on the show. This one coming from Bronco Loon, who I assume is a giant Broncos fan. It says, love the start and well, love the start and sit him show. It's always fire. Appreciate the love there. My question is not about a Bills player, but was wondering, is James Robinson worth starting this week? I feel like that's a shot at you. I think this is a question for you because I, I can only answer Bill's players' oh. questions, I think. Uh, Sorry about your luck, Bronco Loon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think James Robinson is in play, but I feel less confident about him now than I did at any point really since week one because Travis Etienne continues to play more snaps. Uh, last week, they had the same number of carries. Etienne had more targets, looked more explosive. I think they're both in play, but he's more of like a flex option than he has been in recent weeks, I think. This, I think, is going to be really a telling week for James Robinson. We're still trying to figure out on the whole what the Jaguars offense is, but right now, both Etienne and Robinson have shown they can be productive, so it's hard to sit either one of them, but we are kind of in a space where you don't know which one is going to pop on any given week. So, yeah, I think you're starting James Robinson, but understand that it does come with a little bit of risk. Uh, involved in it so moving on to this one from jamie c who a nice the, avi the nice avi right with the the neon green highlighter uh, seahawks jerseys there should i start devonta smith or raheem mostert at flex so i think mostert is the running back that you could trust in miami but i still don't fully trust him if that makes sense mm -hmm. uh, devonta smith though i think is is fully in play it's gonna be a big it's a huge game between the cowboys and uh the eagles this week I think uh, I, I think Jalen Hurts is going to play pretty well, and I know he's going to they're going to try to get pressure on him. So I'm expecting a lot of quick passes to AJ Brown and Devonta Smith. Well, and I think the thing that's working against Ricky Mostert right now is probably Skylar Thompson, who is expected to get the start for the Dolphins. Yeah. I, I have a, a tough time thinking that the Dolphins' defense is going to slow down Minnesota. Can they stay with Justin Jefferson? Can they stop Dalvin Cook? So that means if the Dolphins are in a trailing script, that takes Raheem Mostert out of things, whereas I think for the Eagles and Cowboys, that game stays fairly close. Yeah. So both teams kind of stay in their normal game script. So I think Devonta Smith is also the answer there. Let's go to this one from Nolan Sullivan. Henry and Jacobs and Adams on a bye this week. Start Daryl Henderson or drop for a one-week rental. Yeesh. That's rough. But at least you get all these buys out of the way right now. So that's, that's I guess, an upside for you. Yeah, it, it all depends on, on what rentals are out there. But I'm going to guess that there's better options out there than Daryl Henderson. One, he's been ineffective as of late. Cam Akers has been getting more work. The Rams have been a tough uh, offense to really trust outside of Cup and Higby. Like, if... if Eno Benjamin might have been picked up, but he was an option you could have looked to grab. Even like Alexander Madison's been getting more work. One of the Broncos' backup running backs. I don't know, like is James Cook getting too deep? Jalen Warren? Like I, I think those are names I would take the upside play on over Henderson. Maybe. I mean, also throw Rashad White in yes. there if he's available too this week. I like Rashad White against the Pittsburgh Steelers. So there's a few names you can check the waiver wire for. If none of those are available, then I think you have to sort of suck it up and kind of roll with Daryl Henderson. But that's not appealing. I completely understand your dilemma. Hopefully that so hopefully some of those other options are out there on the waiver wire and can help you out this week. All right, coming up, we are talking sleepers. We got more of your questions on tap. Be sure to hit us up where you can at NFL Fantasy on Twitter and be sure to stick around for more of the Fantasy Q&A show. It's time for Game Changers, presented by Visa. Anyone can change the game. This is the part of the show where we talk about our sleepers for week six. So who is on your list? 
Daniel Jones. I, I know it might. It, <laughs> I love the deep breath you took before you said that. <laughs> because I, I even feel a little dirty hyping up Daniel Jones. But a lot of people are in need of quarterbacks this week. Four teams are on bye. A lot of the quarterbacks that we thought were reliable, like Russell Wilson and Matt Stafford, just haven't been. Uh, so if you're one of these teams that are looking at the waiver wire for a quarterback, I, I like Danny Dimes this week. The, the Ravens have allowed the fourth most fantasy points to quarterbacks. Jones has rushed for at least 21 yards in every game, so you're going to get some points out of his legs. The Giants, they've been keeping games competitive and just playing better football than I think many of us expected uh, they would. And then his receivers are getting a little healthier. We're not going to have Kadarius Toney this week, but it looks like we're going to get Wandell Robinson back. Darius Slayton last week looked the best he's looked all season. So, again, it's not like a must-start or anything like that, but if you're going deeper for a quarterback, Daniel Jones is a name that you could stream this week. Definitely a streaming option. I also appreciate that you have filled your Kadarius Tony mentions, your quota <laughs> for the week as well. All right. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo. <laughs> and I may get kicked out of my text chain with my 49er fan friends for suggesting this, but Jimmy Garoppolo is a streaming option this week. The thing about Garoppolo is he is not mobile, and I've often said that the next pass rusher he evades will be the first. But the good news is... The Atlanta Falcons don't really get a lot of pressure on the quarterback. And if you give Garoppolo time to stand back there and survey the field, he will do a good job of carving you up. And for all the frustrations Niner fans have with Garoppolo, in games like this that aren't necessarily high stakes, he will show up and play. He gave you 18 points last week against Carolina. This is an even better matchup, so he can get involved. He can spread the ball around to his pass catchers. By the way, I think this is also a good week to get George Kittle involved. But I think Garoppolo, sort of like Daniel Jones, a nice streaming option for you. Definitely a two-quarterback league option. But if you're looking for streamers with buys, with guys underperforming, I mean, we've talked about it before. If you've got Matt, uh, Matt Stafford, if you've got, I'll say Matt Ryan too. Yeah, Matt Ryan. Yeah. You've got Russell Wilson. Jimmy Garoppolo, probably a better option than them this week. This feels also like a week where like he could hit Debo Samuel on like a two-yard pass, and Debo takes it like 60 yards. And you get all those points. Yep. <laughs> that still counts for you. So sometimes a quarterback doesn't have to do all the work. Sometimes you let your supporting cast help you out, and it still counts the same in fantasy. Okay, let's get back to some more of your fan questions. We will start with this one from Sam Staples. He wants to know, do I sit Jalen Hurts? For Geno Smith, as good as Geno Smith has been this year, and he's like a top six quarterback on the year, no. Like, yeah. Jalen Hurts, there's three elite options at the quarterback position. It's Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson. You start them no matter who they're playing every single week. Every single week. Yeah, I think this is a simple one. Yes, Geno Smith's been playing good football, but Jalen Hurts has been playing at an upper echelon level. And it was J.J. Zacharyson, the noted late-round quarterback on Twitter, who tweeted earlier in the week that... If you have one of the elite quarterbacks, you have a huge advantage so far this season in, in terms of weekly fantasy points. It's an advantage that we have not seen the likes of in a long, long time. So that means that one of those top three guys is automatically in your lineup. Like, like right now, Geno Smith, QB6, Jalen Hurts, QB3, 30 points uh, separating. That's, 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 that's a, a lot. That's a big gap after the first five weeks of the season. They wrote me off. Plus, I ain't right back, though. You didn't write back, and that's good for you, Gino. But you're also not giving us the rushing upside that Jalen yeah. Hurts gives us. So that's that's a difference there. Moving on to the next one. This one from Drin asking, should I trade away Amon Ra for Mixon, for Joe Mixon? I'm struggling with buys. and only have Pierce and Cook as my running backs, but I'm stacked at wide receiver. What do you think? I think that's a fair trade. Uh, uh, like Joe Mixon, I know, hasn't quite delivered what we wanted him to, but he is still getting insane opportunities each week. Uh, coming into last week, he was touching the ball almost 30 times a game. And I know he's gotten so many looks near the goal line. He hasn't turned them into a bunch of touchdowns, but eventually that's going to change. And once he starts finding the end zone, you're going to want this guy on your roster. So I think it's a fair trade if you need a running back. I had to get out of my feelings after I read the question because I was like, trade Amon Russing for now. <laughs> How could you? But then, yes, logically, it does make sense. If you need help at running back and you have depth at wide receiver, you go ahead and you make this deal. Because then you are potentially looking at three RB1s. Because I, I think Dalvin Cook's going to get better. Damian Pierce is rounding into shape as a low-end RB1. Joe Mixon has RB1 upside. So you could be incredibly deep suddenly at running back when you get to the fantasy playoffs. And especially if you have that depth at wide receiver, I think it's, it's a very good move. Uh, one more. This one from 42087. Okay. Uh, is Alec Pierce 
worth a start. I know you have been big on the Alec Pierce train this week. It all depends on what your options are, but I definitely think he is in play this week because he just continues to earn more work from Matt Ryan uh, in this Colts offense. Last week, he led the Colts in every receiving category. His targets, catches, and yards have increased every single game. And let's not forget, like he was a, a high draft pick this year that they had some high hopes for. He missed uh, time early on because of a concussion, but he's becoming more and more of part of their passing game. I think opposite of Michael Pittman, he's now the number two target. Can I say this? This week, I'm a little bit concerned about Michael Pittman because the Jaguars have been tough on wide receivers, and so I think they're going to pay attention to Pittman, not let him be the guy that beats them, which means we could see some more opportunity for Alec Pierce. So I, I definitely think that he is worth a start this week. So good luck to you on that. Hopefully everything turns out okay. Up next, we got a Monday Night Football game. It's going to be played right there, right over there. In fact, as I drove into work, I saw the MNF truck sitting out in front of the parking structure. So they're already tailgating. I mean, if, if you know, another network would tailgate. In front. Anyway, it's a whole thing. <laughs> we got Monday Night Football preview coming up after the break. Stick around for more of the Fantasy Q&A show. Taking a look ahead to Monday Night Football, the Broncos come to Los Angeles to take on the Chargers, and we each picked a player from each team that we are keeping an eye on. So for Denver, who are you watching? I want to watch but not start Russell Wilson this week. I, I think that you sit him on your bench. I'm not dropping him or anything like that because, look, he's been struggling. In two of his last three games, he's got single-digit fantasy points, 11 or fewer in three of his last four. He really has just one good game all season, but... He did get that shoulder injection the other day after that Thursday night game. He says every day his throwing arm feels stronger and stronger. And, I mean, if we're being honest, like, something has to be wrong physically with Russell Wilson, the way he's been playing so far this year, unless he just lost all of his talent, like, Space Jam-wise over the <laughs> offseason. Uh, so I, I'm going to watch him closely to see if he looks more like Russell Wilson. You talk about losing your powers Space Jam-like. I prefer the movie Thunderstruck with Kevin Durant, where in a Freaky Friday like like uh, occurrence, he gives all of his basketball powers to I never saw that a high school basketball team equipment manager. It's hilariously bad. Oh, okay. So you should check that out. <laughs> I don't think Kevin Durant wants to talk about it, but I'll talk about it. Uh, for the Denver side, I'm talking about Mike Boone, who I've been on the sleeper train with this week. I sort of like the fact that the Broncos have continued a 60-40 split in their backfield. Obviously, it's Melvin Gordon now getting most of the work, but that still means Mike Boone's going to get quite a bit of opportunity. And with Russell Wilson struggling, you wonder if Denver turns and leans on its running game a little bit more to try to get things going. If that's the case, it's a good matchup because the Chargers give up more fantasy points per game to the running back position than any other team out there. Boone, definitely not the pass catcher Javante Williams was, but he will still get a few targets as well. So hopefully that lets you pick up a few cheap points. So if you're in some deeper leagues, again, if you're in a 10-team league, this is not directed at you, but if you're in deeper leagues and you got buys, you have injuries, Mike Boone is out there and is potentially a nice flex option for you this week. Flipping over to the Chargers, who are you paying attention to this week? I'm paying attention to Gerald Everett because I, I've gotten a lot of people on Twitter and stuff like worried about Gerald Everett asking if he is still a streaming option, and I think so. Like I get it. Last week, one catch for two yards, awful. But he's had three games this year with over 13 fantasy points, and it's like we've been saying for Taysom Hill all week. Like When you're streaming tight ends, none of them bring a safe floor. So I understand that last week's matchup uh, performance is probably scaring a lot of people, but understand with streaming tight ends there's not a safe floor out there but not many of them bring the upside that a Gerald Everett could bring in this Chargers offense especially with Keenan Allen still up in the air so I still think Everett remains in play we talk about the advantage you get from having drafted one of the elite quarterbacks you have a major advantage if you drafted one of the two right now elite tight yeah. ends in Travis Kelsey and Mark Andrews for everybody else we're just trying to piece it together on a week-to-week -week basis I'm looking at Justin Herbert there for the Chargers, and Herbert still has incredible upside. We know what he can be when he's at his best, but I do worry about him a little bit this week because of the matchup. The Broncos, for all their problems offensively, defensively, they've been fine. It's the reason they've been in pretty much every game they've played this season because that defense is keeping them close. 
Hopefully Keenan Allen is able to play because that does change this offense. The one thing we have learned is that they don't have the speed to really stretch the field deep and defenses aren't worried about their receivers getting behind them. But Allen adds an extra dimension, sort of open things up underneath, allows guys like Mike Williams to kind of get down the field, hopefully open some things up for Gerald Everett as well, and just makes this offense a whole lot better. So I think you're starting Justin Herbert because, look, chances are there's nobody out there that you feel more confident in this week. But I don't really love the matchup, and I do have concerns that maybe the number you get from him isn't particularly great this week. All right, let's rapid fire answer some more of your questions that you sent to us on Twitter at NFL Fantasy. This one from the Packers wide receiver room. Hey, we have questions for you, actually. Did we start Romeo Dobbs? What's going on with Christian Watson? Like, you have to answer some of our questions, Packers wide receiver room. But we'll give you, we'll do you the solid, and uh, we'll answer this. Should I trade DJ Moore for Deontay Johnson? Yes. Like, no question, I think. Uh, <laughs> and, and I know we're worried about, or some people are worried about Deontay Johnson. He's still getting a bunch of volume each week. He's still getting a ton of air yards. And we know who his quarterback is, and he's building chemistry with the rookie there. DJ Moore, I mean, it's going to be Baker Mayfield, PJ Walker, and Sam Darnold the rest of the way yeah. on an offense that just fired their coach. Like, I, I want no part of the Outside of McCaffrey, no part of the Yeah, this feels like an easy answer for me. Like, first off, you, you got somebody to trade you, Deontay Johnson, for DJ Moore? <laughs> you would absolutely say yes to that. Real question, who would you rather have a quarterback right now, Kenny Pickett or Baker Mayfield? Kenny Pickett. At Ooh. least there's some unknown upside there. We, we kind of know who Baker Mayfield is. I'm uh, not saying you're wrong. <laughs> Just <laughs> oof. All right, this one from... EC loves blue. SE loves blue. Sorry if I butchered that. Eno Benjamin or Rashad White for the flex? I like Rashad White as well, but I'm going to go with Eno Benjamin here this week just because White is playing behind Leonard Fournette. While, while he's getting more usage, he's still Leonard Fournette is still going to get the bulk of it there. Eno Benjamin is going to be the lead back, it's looking like, on a Cardinals team that is without their secondary backup in Darrell Williams as well, so he could just eat this week. 100% agree with that one. Yeah, you know, it's definitely the more volume play. Rashad Watt I like because I think the game script is going to favor Tampa Bay. But, you know, if something goes wonky and that doesn't happen, then, you know, Rashad White might not get the volume we expect. Last one, this one from Hunter, who wants to know, should I start Kittle, Everett, or Njoku in week six? You just wanted the humble brag that you have all yeah. three of these tight ends on your roster. That's I was going to say, it's one tight end that you kind of spoke up earlier in Kittle, mm -hmm. one that I spoke up earlier in Everett, and I'm going to go off menu and say David Njoku. Uh, that's the idea. I feel like that's the answer. It's David Njoku. He's been so good the last three weeks. Like, it's. I think he, lead, he leads all tight ends in yards in the last three weeks. Well, and, and right now, that passing game in Cleveland is pretty much Amari Cooper and David Njoku. So, whereas San Francisco, you know, they're still getting it to Ayuka, still getting it to Debo Samuel. In Los Angeles, there's still a lot of pass catchers to get the ball to. It's more funneled in Cleveland, so I think Njoku's absolutely he the He should answer probably that. make a trade. You should probably make a trade. <laughs> there's got to be somebody in your league, probably multiple somebodies in your league that need a tight end. So, you should probably trade one of those guys away and get something back in return. All right, let's take a look at what is going on around the World Wide Web. This is a tweet from our own Cameron Wolf. It says, Tyree Kill and the Dolphins team captains decided to take the ping pong table out of the locker room. Mike McDaniel said players decided they wanted more time investment for preparation on Sunday, so they did something about it. Ping pong table was a new addition this year. But there's more to it than this. This one from David Ferronis says, Tyreek Hill says today, the real reason the ping pong table is out of the Dolphins locker room is he's working on getting a new custom designed Dolphins table to replace it. He said the old one had gotten bent, which I feel like there's a story there too. <laughs> the player tournament is still on according to Tyreek Hill. So the question is, is this, you know, I know we like to find any advantage. We like to find any narrative to incre increase a player's scoring options or p potential with a ping pong table being moved out of the locker room. Does that help? Are we higher on the Dolphins now because they're not distracted by ping pong? Not at all. In <laughs> fact, I saw on Twitter someone was like, Tyreek Hill took out the ping pong table so they were less distracted, and then he went home and he was on Twitch for hours. And I was <laughs> like, yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't correlate. <laughs> so, all right, so I guess, I guess this doesn't mean anything at all. <laughs> so that narrative seems to have fallen on its face already. But I do want to see, well, one, I want to see what happens to the old ping pong table. Do they donate it to... 
you know, uh, I don't know, a, a, a boys and girls club somewhere. Uh, I know Judy Batista was saying they should sell it to another team looking to motivate or build cohesiveness in their locker room. I said it should be the, the brotherhood of the traveling ping pong table. Uh, you know, plus I want to see what the new one looks like, the custom designed one looks Selfishly, like. Selfishly, I think when they play the Bills, someone should just jump through it. Just jump through it. That should be uh, – Parker loves that. Parker got really, <laughs> she got really fired up when you she said that. She volunteers to jump through it. You know, we're still waiting for the, the – part of the reason I want the Bills to win the Super Bowl is because I want to see Florio jump through a table. I, if they win the Super Bowl, I will 100% like come right here and jump through a table. This is like – I look, I, as a 49er fan, I want them to win the Super Bowl. But if they can't, the Bills have to do it just for that to happen. <laughs> so there you go. All right. I said at the top of the show, you should subscribe to this show, and I think you should, because if you do, that means you get fantasy goodness in your feed five days a week between this show on Fridays and Tuesdays. You get the Stardom Sidham show on Thursdays, and you get the fantasy football show on Mondays and Wednesdays. I know I did the days out of order. Sue me. I don't care. <laughs> we also have Fantasy Game Day, which kicks off at noon Eastern time on Sundays. You can find that in the Fantasy app, the NFL channel as well. Also on YouTube, our channel there, so you can check us out in so many different places. But we Appreciate you watching. For Florio, for the specialists, I'm Marcus. Enjoy week six, everybody, and we'll talk to you next week.